Hello, fans of World of Paleo Anthropology. This is Seth Chagi, your host. Today we are doing a special episode of Skulls with Seth that I know I've been talking about, and it's taken me a little longer to put together and record than I planned because I have actually been waiting on some information that came up, and I wanted to share that with you as soon as I got it, which was yesterday, I believe. And so today for Skulls with Seth, we're going to be talking about the Broken Hill Skull, also known as Cobway One, nicknamed Rhodesian Man, as you can see him right here. Let's get that close-up of his face. Get a good look around him. On all sides. You can see a large part of the skull is missing here. But it's a very complete skull. Now, there's a lot of controversy surrounding the skull, which we're going to get into a little bit. But first, I wanted to go over more of the morphological information about it. Because that's what we're really here for in these episodes, if I'm not mistaken. So this species at first was put in its own class. It was Rod uh, Homo rhodensiensis because it was found in what was then known as the country of Rhodesia, now modern day Zambia. And this was in 1921 discovered by Tom Zweiglar and it dates to about 274 to 330,000 years old. Making this most likely what we used to call a Homo heidelbergensis. However, there's been a trend lately going on where we want to maybe perhaps retire that species. And instead of Homo heidelbergensis, just referring to these and those that look like them as based on Neanderthals meaning hominins that were pre-Neanderthal and closely on their way to becoming Neanderthals, which we can see in a lot of these features. I don't have a Neanderthal skull with me. I should have brought one so I could compare them. Maybe we'll do that in a short later today. But we can see the large brow ridges, the oblong football-shaped cranium, and we can see the large nose that protrudes, but not, you know, they're not that prosnathic. The angle is pretty small and close to modern humans. But there is no rise of the skull of the cranium above the brow, which we would see in modern Homo sapiens, of course, but which is absent in Neanderthals and apparently Homo heidelbergensis, or this basal Neanderthal species. Now, as we can see from looking at this skull, there's a lot we can learn from it. And deciphering whether it is its own species, or if it belongs to the Neanderthal species, we have a lot of work left to do. We'll have to get DNA or protonomics from this guy to be 100% sure. Now, there is something that I did want to touch on that might take up a good deal of this video, and that is what is going on with this skull. Because it's important to understand and know what's going on with the skull to understand some of the larger issues in the world of paleoanthropology. As I was talking about in my last episode of Paleo Fridays, where we talked about looting and treasure hunting and the misappropriation of cultural heritage items, this is a great example. Cobway 1, as I mentioned, was discovered in Zambia in 1921, but since then has been located in the London Natural History Museum. Now, I am not picking sides, and I do not choose who does what, and I want to clarify that no individual is in charge of what happens to the skull, but the London Natural History Museum is known for misappropriating items, and unfortunately they are only beginning to just now resume sending them back to their places of origin. Now, I actually got, through one of my contacts, an official statement from the London Natural History Museum concerning the Cobway Skull. 
And I wanted to get this so that we could set the record straight because a lot of people are blaming individuals when they do not have control over what is going on, when they have to report to the curator and the board and the shareholders and it's the whole long thing. Now that is not an excuse. Cobway 1 should be returned to Zambia as soon as possible, but there's nothing that you or I can do about that. And we have to wait for the governments to collaborate and allow that to happen. So the official statement that I have is that, quote, we are committed to the construction, I'm sorry, the constructive participation dialogue between Zambia and the UK and the fossil and have offered to explore the agenda and process for this discussion with the Zambian authorities. Now, sounds like there's progress, sounds like there's dialogue and there's talking, but of course we we really need more. This guy needs to return to Zambia because he belongs to their culture, to their history. This is their ancestor. Now, of course, this is an ancestor of all modern humans, all hominins are, but at some level and some point, we have to understand that these fossils belong to their countries of origin. Usually, let's say we take Ethiopia, for example, they have their National Museum of Ethiopia. If you want to study or examine a fossil, you can go there and do it, or you can rent it out and you have it for a certain period of time before you need to return it. That's not what's going on with the Broken Hill Skull. The London Natural Hitch Museum is just keeping it. They just have it. Now, this will hopefully change soon, but for now we have to just rely on the studies and research that we're getting out of it right now. Soon, hopefully, we'll have some collaboration between the Zambian authorities and the government of the United Kingdom in getting this immensely important cultural item returned to its country of origin. Now, once that is done, collaborative science and peer review can really continue to explore whether this is its own species, Homo rodensiensis, Homo heidelbergensis, or a basal Neanderthal or possibly a Neanderthal in general. There's so much variation in what we're looking at that we don't know without comparing all these skulls at the same time and place that it's impossible to put all the puzzle pieces together without seeing the bigger picture. And while this is a piece of the bigger picture, we have to understand it's only one piece and there's so much more out there to discover and so much more to learn. As one of my favorite paleoanthropologists loves to say, never stop exploring. And it's very true. There's always more to discover. And as my motto goes, there's always more to learn. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that like button so you can get and stay up to date with any videos that I come out with, including Paleo Fridays, which I should hopefully be recording today and putting out as well as well as future episodes of Skulls with Seth, where we examine these skulls, and let's get another nice look at this guy. The Broken Hill Skull, also known as Cobway One. And we can see all the details about this guy. So if you enjoyed, please be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to help future science communication efforts on my behalf, please hit that uh, give button at the bottom of the video. It really helps me out with getting items like these that I can use to show off in my videos to help promote STEM education for free, as that is my goal and the main thing that I do. Now... Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And next time, let me know what skull you want to go over. I'm almost out of the skulls that I have. So we'll have to see how I'm going to get some more. Because I don't have a 3D printer. So if you have some suggestions or want to help out with that, again, you can hit that give or donate button. You can do it on the website as well. And I'll be able to get some more skulls so that we can go over them, talk about their history, look at them and just discover what there is to be discovered with these guys. 
And, you know, just to give a comparison, here he is to my head. Nowhere near as large as a Neanderthal, but definitely larger than any other previous hominin before it. Especially when we're talking about brain case. And, you know, there's really a lot we can learn about this guy, especially because of the way he's been locked up in the back rooms of the London Natural History Museum, but hopefully that'll change. And if it does, we will definitely talk about it next time. And until then, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time.